Afrobeats is a genre that's topping charts around the world. Its rhythmic beat and Afro hip hop fusion blend is truly music that makes you want to dance. And the king of Afrobeats, Davido, has been on the forefront of bringing the genre to the masses for well more than a decade now. His fourth studio album, Timeless, continues to reinvent the sound of Afrobeats. Its energetic sound is what the world keeps listening to and can't get enough of. ABC's Rena Roy spoke with him. One thing a lot of people can agree on is your title of King of Afrobeats. Sure. So what has this level of success been like for you? Being called that is amazing and it's been a long time coming. I started when I was pretty young, you know what I'm saying? Some people say I'm still young, but uh, I disagree. I think I'm a grown man. <laughs> you know, not only Afrobeats, but African culture as a whole to be, you know, you know very respected and cherished in, in the Western world, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm happy about that. And let's talk about your music, which by the way, I'm a big fan of. You are Nigerian American, but how would you describe your particular sound? I would say my style, not musically, but my style, like my lifestyle, I would say has a lot of like Western culture, which is like America kind of hip hop. But my music, I feel like my music is 80%, 90% African culture. I grew up listening to hip hop, R&B, I grew to love African music when I was like 13, 14, 15. When we had the likes of like P-Square, The Band, Two-Face. You know, growing up in Atlanta, we used to rap. I used to love 50 Cent. I used to love Ludacris, Ja Rule, Nelly. But when I go into college and, you know, I, um, African music started, you know, growing up and grew, getting big from back home, and then I just fell in love with it. And I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. How do you think African music has evolved over all this time? Man, I always used to come to America, like, as a kid, once a year. Um, my brothers and sisters all grew up in Atlanta. My mom graduated from an Atlanta university. My dad went to school in Kentucky. So, you know, we've always been coming, but I grew up, like, I'm the last kid of five. So my parents made me stay with them in Lagos. But when I came to America to live, I was about 15. I went to Tennessee at first, then from Tennessee, I went to Alabama. And just even being in my dorm room, playing African music loud, my friends would come in, like my friends from New York, my Jamaican friends, and they're like, yo, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the first time they ever heard it. I always knew that if people had the opportunity to hear it, they'd love it. You can see that everybody's hard work, not only myself, other people that have put into this genre, to this culture, everybody's hard work is now paying off. How do you think this popularity in Afrobeats and African music is helping to kind of change perceptions of Africa? Man, I remember like even when I landed in school years ago and they were like, where are you from? And obviously like I'm dressed well. I'm like, Nigeria, like, yeah, I know you're from Nigeria, but where do you live? I say, I live in Nigeria. I've lived in Nigeria for the past 15 years of my life. So eventually, you know, social media, now we have social media, you have people going to Nigeria, going to Ghana, doing vlogs, putting it on YouTube, you know, beautiful resorts, safaris, you know, people, people are now going back home. But don't get me wrong, they're, they're, you know, there are bad parts of, you know, Africa which we need to change, but there are also amazing parts where I feel like everybody in this lifetime has to experience. And you mentioned social media as a way of educating and sharing. How do you think social media has helped share your music with a wider audience all across the globe? You can't compare, let's say, six, seven years ago till now. Like, I remember the music process then, it take you months to promote a song. I remember me and my management, we shared, we, we shared like 5,000 5, 5, CDs, like going everywhere, parties, you know what I'm saying, trying to promote, whereas now, you can be in your dorm room in college and create a song and have a challenge and the next day you wake up and you're a millionaire. Right, and whereas now you're single, unavailable, I mean, blowing up the internet, it's yeah. huge on TikTok with the, with yeah, the unavailable it, it, challenge. It, it, and it's crazy how that happened because the album dropped, we was in South Africa, and then the next day I just called my friends. I'm like, yo, let's just do the video because the dance, um, we was going to use it, the dance for the music video. We were showing the music video like, four days later. And then we did the dance that we're meant to use in the video shoot. And then we did it and it was so dope. And I was like, yo, I'm posting it. And we went to dinner, a couple hours later, my phone's blown up. I'm like, yo, it's going crazy. Every, every type of people doing it, I just, that made me just realize something. You know what I'm saying? The song, 
The only part really in English is The rest is either broke, bro, broken English or my local dialect, which is Yoruba. You know what I'm saying? And people are singing it. They don't understand it, but obviously they understand the, the main part of the song. But it just shows you how universal music is. It doesn't have a language. It's, it's really a feeling. I'm on Let's talk about that latest album, Timeless, your fourth studio album. You got some big people on it. Musa Keys, Ashake, Skepta. Walk us through the inspiration of that project. It wasn't really like premeditated, you know what I'm saying? I really just wanted to make an album just freely for the first time. I hope people like it and stuff like that, but I didn't put pressure on myself, you know what I'm saying? Everything just came together naturally. And Unavailable was just nominated for a VMA's award, Best yes. Afrobeat Song, which is a new category, yeah. not just for the VMA's, but for the Grammys, for the American Music Awards. What does that mean to you to see that on such a big platform in these American Music Awards? Man, like if you told me five years ago that they would actually make a, make a category for us, uh, I'd, I'd, be, I'd laugh at you. Um, but it, it definitely you know, shows you that there's more to come. And it shows you that um, we're doing something right. So now somebody that's making African music back home that doesn't know how to speak English, doesn't have to worry about, I gotta put English in my song to win a Grammy, or I have to put English in my song to win a VMA. So now you can go and be free and know that you'll be recognized whichever way, whichever how you do it. That's hope. Our thanks to Rena Roy and Davido for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.